Today I have something special to show you. We've done oh, a few thermal imaging things now be between the FLIR module, the Doogee phone, the Infrared infra 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 module. They've all been your, well say typical, normal, uh, you know, thermal imaging type devices. And I've been lucky enough to be able to show you today the EGM Guardian G2 ther thermal monocular phone. Now, it's not just your typical, uh, you know, thermal camera phone. This one has a thermal monocular. Look at the size of that sensor. That That is the thermal imaging sensor. Uh, the rest of it is your camera lenses first, uh, macro and your normal photography modes. Uh, but we'll do more about the outsides and the innards and the workings of the cameras and all the other bits after. Because the main bit, obviously, of this phone is the thermal monocular nature of it. I'm trying to fingerprint the sensor on the side, but it's... There it goes. It was just ignoring me. And let us do a screen capture. Record all the audio. Go. Okay, screen recording. Right, let's open up the... Let me zoom back out a bit so it makes, makes, make it make sense. Make it make sense. Right, let's fire up the thermal app. And here is where all the ther thermal, the thermal activity lives. So its normal mode of operation that we use it in is thermal detection. Let me just use the autofocus there, look at that. So its thing is, its main thing is uh, being able to see long distance, like 500 meters of thermal imaging. I'm going to put some videos on that I went out and took, but you know it's hard to find wildlife when you're trying to find it. Like the, I'm going to put some videos up and I'll talk about them in a minute, but it's hard and, and I was trying to find friends to come out with me, but nobody would. So I just had to go out and do it by ourselves. But you can see here, we are looking at, that's actually a refle the thermal reflection of me off a shiny metal surface. Uh, as you can see, well, we are we are this close to that laptop. That's, that's the laptop is uh, the one behind us, which has actually got a lot of the website up for the thermal garden. But you can see here, I can look at the, le the level of detail. And this is in like thermal hunting mode. Where's presets? Let me show you. So this is highlight. So this would this is going to highlight the hottest object it can find, which. Well, if you're looking for animals or people, it'll hopefully be the hottest uh, thing on screen. Enhanced is a slightly, well, as it says, enhanced version of that. And then the other one is called natural, which it kind of does a bit better job of smoothing out the highs and the lows and giving you a bit better image quality. And as we'll uh, go through, like on the website, I'll show you on the thing. Where are we going? Oh, oh down a bit. Oh, let me see. So they've got some nice uh, pictures of 10 meters, 50 meters, 100s, 200s, 300s, 500s. And I've been out in the field and I'll say that's pretty accurate results to what I got as well. Because I was seeing ducks at long range and you can, well, don't know if you know about ducks, but they're covered in feathers which keep in all the heat. So basically they've got a very, very small thermal signature. So I'd filmed this section previously, but I've come back to film it again because I wasn't happy. Because it's, well, I find it really difficult to convey how well the infrared monocular works. Well, obviously in the dark. Well, it doesn't have to, well, to be fair, it doesn't have to be in the dark. The infrared monocular doesn't care if it's daylight or dark. But the reason that I did it in the dark was uh, obviously the ground temperature is a lot lower, so it's easier to see the difference between the hot things and the cold things. But I did a bit more filming today because I wanted to show off it a bit better because it, it it really is good and it's a lot harder to show it. I mean, it's easier to show it in real life on the phone by doing things than it is to show you or convey in this video. So I've got a few of the videos that I did. I have a short eight second clip here. This is me trying to film a pigeon that had landed on top of my shed roof. There is the pigeon. and Hopefully you can see in this video how fast the frame rate is. It's, well, it's supposed to be, well, it is 25 frames a second, but you can see you can actually see a bird flying in thermal. Remember, this is all in thermal images, isn't recolored anything. This is all just thermal image. 
And I got my friend to help me out by walking away from me all the way up my driveway. So, I don't know, my driveway's like 15, 20 metres long. Uh, so I got her, got her to walk away up the driveway. And you can see uh, this is the, uh, I'm going to call it the hunting mode. We'll call it hunting mode. It's the one that best emphasises uh, hot objects uh, compared to their uh, surroundings. And that's, well, you can see the resolution even at that range. You can tell that's a person and they're walking. And that was, that's that, right. What else did I film when I was outside and about? Uh, was this the one? Ah, oh, this is, this is a long video one. This is me. I went down to the local park at night and I was trying to find wildlife. And man, this is in the dark, this one. This one is in the pitch black. There is no daylight there. Oh, everything you see in this is thermal. So all the differences in surfaces and things, that's all difference in temperature. So you can use this in the absolute pitch black as long as there's going to be some differential temperatures. Let me see if I can fast forward a bit till I find the ducks. There they are. There are two ducks that I think they spot me eventually or they hear me. But hopefully you can see there, I'm doing a bit of auto focusing. Obviously ducks are really well insulated and only their teeny tiny heads are, you know, their eyes basically are un uninsulated and giving off heat sources. This is me scanning the body of water again for more creatures, but uh, it's just uh, basically those two ducks and a few other ducks. And then I went out and back in some other fields and there's me, I found a horse. It was uh, really easy, easy to spot because it's horse shaped and it's got four long legs. Did I do a video of a horses? Yes, there's a video of one of the horses. Again, quite far away in a field, and I'm standing at the fence. Oh, it's two horses. And because the phone has real autofocus, it's not just a fixed focus lens, you can do far away things, close things, you know, or, and it actually adjusts the focal, focal range. So you can get nice sharp images of things that are close up and far away. Did I have that was that was a ducks. Uh, that's my friend's cat. Now, this is a creep. I'm not gonna lie. This is a fairly creepy video because cats have got really really thick fur. Basically, all you can see is like a hot cat skull. You can see the cracks in in the cat's fur there, where the the real heat is coming from their body. But that was a cat sitting on the window ledge. And I eventually got it to turn and look at me by making cat noises like pss, 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 and calling its name. But there's its creepy, like a hot cat skull. Yeah, cats are creepy at the best times. They're not even worse so in thermal. Is this a picture of the cat? Yeah, I was it walking towards me. You can basically see its head's the only hot bit. Uh, yeah, so I, that was me out playing. And oh, that's a hot diesel heater exhaust. I have to say, the only, I don't know if I've said it in the video yet or not, but for the outdoor, we'll call it the hunting mode, where you're tracking animals or search and rescue people, that side of the app is brilliant. The slight letdown is the, we'll call it the thermography side of the app, where you're maybe indoors and you want to compare the temperature from wires and things like that. It's not the sensor that's bad or in any way shape or form. it's just the way the software implements it it can just do with a bit better auto ranging I think it's about all it needs an update for just to make the image more user friendly all the information is there it just needs to be um, you know shown in a much more user friendly and easy manner yes you can go into the software and really dial down and fiddle with the settings but you sometimes you just want to point at things and go ah yeah there's there, there's a the temperature and there's it compared to something else Right, so I've now covered and actually hopefully shown off. It's a lot it's a lot better than I'm making it look, but hey, anyway, on we go. So you are probably asking, what's the use of a thermal monocular on your phone? Well, on their website and it's and as I would find it useful is for search and rescue. Like if you are in Scotland, we have a uh, volunteer mountain rescue where everyone's just a volunteer. They're not paid. They are, they just volunteer their time and services to go out and look for people that have got lost up in the hills or out in the mountainsides. And the you know actual 
we'll call them, you know, not military grade, that's not the word, but actual commercial thermal imaging for the purpose of searching and things like that are phenomenally expensive. Now you can buy this phone for like $900. I don't know what it is in pounds. No, somebody do the conversion rate. It's $900, which while expensive for a thermal monocular that you could use to save lives and actually find people in the dark, in the pitch black, you could find heat signatures. $900 is not a lot of money. Again, same thing for law enforcement if you're hunting somebody or you're looking in bushes trying to find someone, that sort of thing. If you're doing any sort of surveillance and you want to, you know, see people without being seen, that's uh, what you want. Uh, I, I know that one of one things is hunting, but I mean, are you really going to be hunting with, I mean, you can hunt, but like, are you going to be hunting with your smartphone out? Now, uh, Shall we talk a little, more, a little bit more about the phone? As I said, it's got a fingerprint sensor on the side. It's one of the power button finger sensors. And while this is a rugged phone, you can drop it, get it wet, all of the usual things. Wait, where's the... Where are our specs? Do I read them out? Where are we? Du -du 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 -du. What IP rating are we? Does it say? Ah, uh, okay, it's IP... Uh, uh, get off. IP 68, 69. Uh, waterproof, shockproof, dustproof, got 108 megapixel rear camera, and there's also, I think there's a macro one as well, there's a main, a macro, and I'm not sure it's a wide, or no, it's an infrared, sorry, uh, infrared, a main, and a macro. Not that infrared camera, like a uh, night vision, you know, black and white infrared, not near infrared, not true infrared, infrared. You know what I mean. Uh, refresh rate, that's the main bit for the thing is 25 hertz, so you can sweep left and right like I was doing the video and on this phone screen it's just it's lovely and buttery smooth. Not like a fleer, aham, aham, 9 hertz, aham, please, please do better, please, please change your silly laws. So we've got slots and whatnot around the outside, we've got SIM card and memory card slot in there and again these are all in behind. Rubberized, rubbery, rubberized covers that are supposed to keep the water out. Same as the bottom with the USB slot and the headphone slot. Again, they're all behind rubber doors to try and keep the dust and the dirt out. Nice big chunky corners. It's got a giant speaker on the back of it. it says it's 102 decibels. I haven't used it for anything because it's a giant speaker. I don't really know. And it's also got accessory pins because I think they do like a Charging cradle and other sort of cradly things that it can go into and charge. Oh, oh, and a, tor a torch on the top. And I've set mine to use the hot key so you can turn the torch on and off just by using the press and holding the key. What other phone features can I talk about? Let's turn on the screen capture again. Go. Oh. Right, screen capture is capturing. So, I've shown you the thermal monocular side of the thermal imaging. Now, the other part of its imaging that it does once the app is fired up uh, is you can switch over to, we'll call it analysis mode. I'm not even sure it's called analysis mode, but I'm calling it analysis mode. And this is where it operates more like your typical uh, thermal imaging imager which you can, you know, set highs and lows and uh, do object analysis and you can draw your boxes around things and get average temperatures and uh, what not, what's the other thing you can, or you can change the the points where high highs and lows are. That's the automatic and the automatic levels. Oh, this laptop's got a really hot spot over there, I don't know what that is. Uh, what was it doing? Ob object analysis. Analysis. Let's give it more points. That's not a focus. Can you move the hair? You can move the point around. Oh, so let's talk about the actual the autofocus then, because it's the only one I know. That's the sound of a chainsaw. That's handy. Okay, I apologise if they can hear the chainsaw going in the background, but uh, it is what it is. So autofocus. So this is like, I think, the only 
thermal imager that's not a fixed focus so you can get up close to things. I don't know how close I can get, but wait, I need a temperature gradient to actually look at. So I can get fairly close to things. Not quite macro level of uh, thermal imaging, but it means you can do close and far, which is kind of handy because animals and whatnot, people tend to be far away and it's nice to be able to focus on the far away and the relatively close. I know I've turned this on its side when it doesn't actually do on its side. But I hope it shows up in the video with a resolution of how nice these images are. I mean, there's, there's spanners and they're on the back wall of the workshop and they're reflecting my heat signature. Wait, is there actually anything hot in this apart from me and the laptop? I think it might just be me and the laptop. But, and I'm going to have to say, and I'm going to apologise to EGM, your analysis mode isn't as good as the everyone else's thermal imaging mode. Your hunting and whatnot side of this uh, app, the, that side, the night vision-y hunting side, that's that's great. That's absolutely fantastic. Look, look at it doing hunting. And, and look at my laptop and see the hot bits and the, it's changing the the level of uh, the infraredness, but in analysis mode it needs more uh, I don't know if it's control I want to see more of the hot and the cold t together and not be quite so blown out or do a better job of adjusting the high and the low it needs to be more automatic, I feel like there's a lot of fiddling I can do to set a high and a low I need it to be more, I need my scale to be more automatic, if that makes sense. That would be a much better thing. And I've been playing with it for a few weeks now. I know I don't have many videos, but that's because I've been playing with it and not actually making content like I was supposed to. But I digress. Um, if you're interested, please, please go and visit the EGM mobile uh, website to get a much better look and read the description and all the actual things that this uh, phone does because I'm doing a fairly terrible job of telling you about it and the, there's a lot more information on there than I can do in a fairly short mid video. All I can show you is my real world experience of going outside and playing with it and it, it does the thing, it absolutely does. You can hunt and find people and find obje hot objects that are far away, that's the thing. As much as I like my thermal imagers for thermal imaging on the bench and electronics and all that, if you take them outside, they are useless any more than 10 metres. It's the same as when you point them at the sky and they see nothing, pitch black. I granted, I don't see nothing. But what I mean is, when you point them far away, the resolution and the fixed focus just goes to blur, so you can't, you can't see any definition, any, any range. Unlike this, which, because it's got a variable focus that you can fix and a long range, you can actually see hot objects further away. I do plan on going out, hopefully if I find friends that will come out with me, I'll maybe do a demonstration, we'll go up the hills and I'll have them hide and I'll try and find them with the, the thermal bit on the phone and it might make an interesting video but it will be in the dark so it might not be that interesting but I want to do it anyway because I guess it's outside and it's a fun thing to do. If you have any more comments, questions, uh, anything like that, uh, leave them please down below and I'll try my very best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching.